I know I haven't done a walkthrough for a while. That's because I hadn't haven't done a tokenomics article for a while. But it looks like the Bankless DAO tokenomics article is going to be released soon. So I thought I'll record a video of the diagram, um, kind of walk you through the tokenomics of Bankless DAO. So Bankless DAO is like um, based on Bankless HQ, which started as a podcast. I'm sure they have a whole bunch more going on, but yeah, essentially like a core team. Um, we're doing this podcast thing. And then last year they decided to create a DAO for the community that they had created with this with this podcast. And um, well, yeah, that entailed creating 1 billion bank token. And these uh, bank tokens were released in a fair launch. That means they were allocated to uh, half of them. No, not Well, yeah, I think half of them or something. I'll have to look it up at the article. But like some of them were distributed to the treasury and investing scheduled in a vesting schedule and um, another part of them were uh, given or airdropped to to members um, based on their membership or subscription to their sub stack um, there's some details um, that are linked to the article how that was how that was distributed but essentially um, Genesis was that and then they had a first proposal once the tokens were distributed to also give a whole bunch of tokens to Bankless HQ. So it was kind of a, yeah, a fair launch, but right after the launch, they did this vote and then the vote went in favor to distribute these tokens to Bankless HQ. So yeah, there's a diverse set of token holders, I guess now, and um, the treasury holds these holds these bank tokens um, and they, they receive more and more over time via a vesting scheduled and a bunch of people also hold these tokens. Then, um, I guess there's not only inflows, and I tried to put these um, outflows in, in green. So the way this DAO, and it, it's really just like, yeah, the, the token is a, a social token, right? So they're, they're, the token is used to bring together this whole community around Bankless. And it's, it's really, really cool what they have built and what they've done over the last um, year. Some really interesting things, not just um, writing articles and publishing really cool content, but uh, there's, uh, yeah, podcasts that have been spin off. There's whole NFT campaigns. They've launched a consulting arm. And uh, yeah, really, really cool things. And how this all works is essentially there's this seasonal budgeting. Um, so seasons, you can kind of see that as quarters, uh, like with the corporation. So every three months, there's a um, budget round. And then, yeah, uh, people of the DAO will need to hand in a proposal that proposal can then be discussed and debated in the forum. And then there's a snapshot vote, which is an on-chain vote where bank token holders can vote on the outcome of that proposal. And if it goes through, it's a, if it's approved, then um, funds, in most cases, I think it's bank, like the bank tokens that they have minted, will then be distributed to the ones requesting the tokens. And the ones requesting the tokens will be either guilds or projects and guilds really, um, yeah, like the, the different kind of work or talent pools that I have internally. So there'd be a, a media guild, there'd be a treasury guild that takes care of the treasure, treasury and diversification. There'll be one for, for like writing and projects will be like more, um, yeah, things that have, that, that, that they've started on the side that would be like maybe an, an NFT thing or the rug. That's this, uh, satire, magazine that they've launched or um, the uh, publishing arm that they've done and yeah, all sorts of other things. But essentially, um, they can request these seasonal budgets and if they get approved, then they'll get the bank tokens for that. So the projects or the guilds, they will end up with this uh, budget distribution out of the treasury and they will then use that to um, pay members. Right. So if you work for the bankless DAO, let's say you publish an article with them, you get a certain amount of bank tokens um, for that. And that's kind of an, an incentive. So you get them and um, when you choose to hold them, uh, you have a, a say in what happens with the treasury um, and what happens in, in the DAO essentially. Right. And there's some roles that like get these like one off payments. So if you design something um, one time, you might get a payment for that. But if you um, take up a role like a talent coordinator for something or something like that, 
then you'd get a regular payment every week or so based on the hours. And um, yeah, that's kind of how members can earn these tokens and how they are distributed to them. Then, uh, yeah, um, projects, maybe even some guilds. I'm not sure about that, but uh, they have revenues for, that come from outside. So for instance, there's this uh, project called Client Services and Client Services, they write articles for, for clients. So they've written articles for Maker or Citadel. I wrote one of these and um, a share of that revenue and they're often like paid in USDC. So like in, in not in bank tokens, but like in stable coins. And a share of that revenue would go to the treasury of Bankless Dow for basically providing this infrastructure, helps the treasury to diversify and, and fund more initiatives. So um, yeah, that's kind of gives you an idea of, of how that works here. And then members also on top of that um, can receive um, additional bank. And, th and this I, I really like this concept because it's more of a, a bottom-up payment system. Um, here, members can tip members because obviously the, the Bankless DAO is decentralized. So um, the, the the peers that you work with, they know best the type of work that you do. And they will, um, if they see that work, they can in Discord just tip you with bank. And that is the, the tipping budget is, is allocated to guilds and I think also to, yeah, pro I think mostly to guilds is, is um, distributed to them. And then they can they can use that to tip other members and uh, coordinate. That's also an interesting thing, um, an interesting tool, a Web3 tool where every month or so they launch this round and uh, tokens are allocated to a budget and then members can essentially just like allocate a certain amount of these tokens to their fund, to their peers and reward them for a great contribution. So it's a really cool novel way of of paying that in the corporate world, I mean like guilds and project payments, they sound like pretty much the same as in the corporate world, just with, with different tokens. But this whole coordinate and tipping, that's something that's that's quite new and novel because it's more of a, um, yeah, a bottom up or not even up. It's like a just peer to peer um, reward system. Um, yeah, that allows to, to yeah, gift other members um, tokens for for great work and um so yeah maybe let's have a look at what the token is is actually used for so so far a lot of these i mean a token obviously is for for governance you can vote on what happens in the treasury what happens in the in the dao um in the guilds and proposals all that kind of stuff you can do and uh bankless dao is a gated community which means that you will need to hold thirty five thousand bank tokens to be a level one member you can obviously start as a guest and there's plenty of guests, I guess, that have worked their way up through uh, just uh, work and they've received payments for that and then um, never really purchased the 35,000 but have just worked into that. Um, so that can happen, but if, if people just want to buy the L1 membership, they can just, yeah, go to the Uniswap or SushiSwap and uh, purchase the 30, 35,000 bank. Um, have them in their wallet, and if they then log into Discord, Discord will see that, and they will get their um, level one tag, and then can access all the channels and all the chats, and don't have to renew their guest pass, um, which is a model that they have. So yeah, that's like um, I guess one of the one of the drivers. I've, I've seen I've I've got a, the exact number quoted in my article, but there's like more than uh, four thousand holders of the bank token, which is which is really good, and I think it's growing, um, which is also healthy. And um, uh, I guess what else obviously happens with this, there needs to be liquidity on the on the market, like on Balancer, uh, SushiSwap and Uniswap for uh, bank tokens. And um, Bankless DAO obviously provides that liquidity and earn fees from that, from the liquidity. So if a member goes onto, the, onto a decentralized exchange, they will uh, pay pay a small fee for that, and that fee goes to uh, the liquidity provider. And um, yeah, obviously m members, if they hold a lot of tokens, they could provide that liquidity themselves, pair it up with some ETH and then uh, or something else or USDC, and then they can collect fees from that. But there's also Olympus Pro, um, which kind of spun off of this protocol-owned liquidity thing, where um, 
the bankless DAO sells discounted bank for liquidity tokens, right? So the, and and with that, they'll incentivize members to put liquidity onto the market, and for that they receive these LP tokens, and these LP tokens can then be via Olympus Pro um, for a discount of bank given to Bankless DAO. And then if Bankless DAO holds the LP tokens, they will collect the fees uh, from these swaps that are happening on the market. So yeah, that's really, in a nutshell, um, what the token does. I guess this is a really, really early thing. It started just merely a, a year ago, and um, there's lots and lots of uh, quite quite cool topics coming up. So while right now there's not really um, huge demand drivers for the token in a way, and a lot of that just like seems to be flowing out of the treasury from this from this diagram, to me it's more of a call option um, like these tokens because the the community is just so so cool in what they're building and um, they have a lot of really great ideas and I think with that uh, at some point there'll be something really cool spun out of this and um, I guess that could potentially create some some demand um, for that token so who knows what's going to happen but I think it's a definitely interesting project and um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough